Nick Zakel and Ben Barch. And these two guys are very similar. Five position players. Now, Nick Zakel drafted by the 49ers. They had a very high grade on him even the year before he came out. He decided to stay an extra year. But when you're looking at the size, six foot six, 320 pounds, and you move him inside, there's a, a thought that he can be a very dominant player on the inside. I think the overall goal was always to get Nick Zakel to center. But that has not materialized. He struggled when he had to take snaps. So they relegated him to guard. And it felt like last year he didn't have an absolute horrible training camp, but he definitely underperformed, that's for sure. He was doing nothing to push anyone. And in fact, if there would have been somebody behind him that was playing better than him, they could have overtaken. Uh, he, he just wasn't playing like, oh, yeah, that guy behind me definitely can't pass. No, there was capabilities for him to get past last year. Inconsistency uh, with his reps. So the 49ers, they like Zakel. He he's you know friends with Brock Purdy. They've been roommates. They like his size, they like his intelligence, they like his athleticism. But so far, it just hasn't clicked. Then he gets injured and put on season ending IR. So now we don't know what Nick Zakel is going to look like coming into the season. The thought process is this is do or die for Nick Zakel. He's definitely firmly in the bubble. He needs to make sure that he plays lights out. The problem is there's guys like Spencer Burford now that's considered a backup that has played better than him, that's got a lot more reps in the NFL than him. There's guys like Dominic Pooney who they are very excited about who they just drafted. In fact, Dominic Pooney is one of my favorite players on the 49ers already. That's how talented I believe he is. So Nick Sakel is not sitting in a comfortable position. They wanted him to play center. You can't be backup center. You might not have a role on this football team. Can you beat out Dominic Pooney? No. Can you beat out Spencer Burford? Doesn't seem likely. So to me, this one is, is screaming that Nick Zakel is going to have a hard time making the 49ers roster. Now, Ben Barch is an interesting one. Zakel was hurt. They didn't have that player with five position versatility. Feliciano can man the entire middle, which he did last year. He played guard. He played the other guard. He did whatever they had to do. Burford hurt, took care of it. Banks hurt, took care of it. If Brendel would have went down, he could take care of that too. But then they bring in Ben Barch. And Barch had been with Jacksonville and on Jacksonville's practice squad. He has games repped in the NFL. He's started football games. He's played in football games. That is an advantage over Nick Sakel. He comes in with the versatility to play all five positions and Chris Furster's talked about the fact he does a pretty good job at center. So there is a likelihood that Ben Barch is already ahead of Nick Sakel as far as roster depth. And I think he should be because he's been out on the field. He's got the reps. He does the same things, but he's better at snapping because I don't think you can put Barch ahead of Burford or ahead of Pooney, but you can put him ahead of Zakel at center or ahead of some of the other guys the 49ers have brought in. Luciano's gone. So it's interesting right there. The fact that Furster likes Bart so much after he was recommended by a former colleague means that they are high on Bart. And even Bart is on the bubble. Because if you decide to keep Jalen Moore on the outside, which is plausible, you bring in Chris Hubbard to play the other tackle. Last year, the 49ers kept Matt Pryor as one of their offensive linemen. It means you potentially have two spots on the interior if you keep nine offensive linemen. Spencer Burford, bubble. Nick Zakel, bubble. Ben Barch, bubble. Because Pooney's making this football team. It would come down to three guys. Now, if they decided that Jalen Moore could handle the tackle position outright, that Spencer Burford and Nick Zakel could play it in a pinch, or Ben Barch, then maybe there's two spots. But it's likely there's one spot available for Burford, Barch, and Zakel. And that may be very difficult for the 49ers because Burford definitely has the most upside of the three players. Barch definitely has the most versatility of the three players. Nick Zakel, you're in trouble. And I think the 49ers would love to keep Zakel even if he didn't make this roster and end up on the practice squad because you could continue to develop him. And I don't think he would get claimed 
uh, off waivers. I could be wrong, but I think you could sneak him to the practice squad and be able to work with him. And we've seen players like Colton McKivitz go to the practice squad, get reinvigorated, and then come back and play a lot better, including getting a starting role. So I don't know if that's in the card for Zakel, but right now of these bubble players, I think he's sitting third. Burford one, Barch two, and then that's where Nick Zakel comes in. So tough sledding right now, but all three of those guys on the bubble to make this roster. This is the first year that Jalen Moore hasn't felt on the bubble. And unless you think Chris Hubbard can beat him out, I think they like Moore at left tackle. He's played some right tackle, but I think they like him behind Trent Williams. So I think Hubbard's opportunity to make the team is playing right tackle as a backup and convincing them he's the John Feliciano of tackles. I think that's his best way to get it done.